I'm John Wall. Uh, thank you all for participating in this session in the middle of your hectic schedule. Uh, I'm in charge of building Nox TV and B2B displays in Samsung Electronics. Yeah. Uh, today, I hope this session to be helpful to you to experience Nox platform for TV and give you information how to maximize your services by using our Nox API. Okay, are you ready? Let's get started. Yeah. Go. Okay, I will explain in order of this agenda. First, let me briefly explain how Nox TV has evolved. Since 2015, Nox security solution was first installed on all models of smart TV and B2B displays. And we opened our Nox security features at SCC 2016 to show why Samsung TV is secure and safe. Last year, we unveiled our Nox platform and Nox function features to software developers they can use. So what can you get from SDC 2018? Okay, today, I will introduce our new features of Nox platform for TV and give you information on how to use our web APIs. However, explain our Nox APIs before. I suppose that we need to revive our memory about Nox platform for TV. So let me briefly explain about Nox for TV now. Okay, Samsung Nox security solution is a special and powerful security solution for Tizen TV that other tradi traditional platforms do not have. Nox protects all range of TV and B2B displays from hardware, platform, and to application. Samsung has adopted the three layers of security solution into the Tizen TV and Tizen signage from 2015. On top of that, the solution is the world's first TV security solution has been certified by common criteria for four consecutive years from 2015. And common criteria is a global standard security standard called ISO IEC 15408. Let's take a look at Nox security solution in more detail. Nox consists of three layers. The first is application security layers, is preventing hacking, targeting application vulnerabilities. However, if hackers succeed in breaking application layer, platform security layer protect kernel from kernel modification and provide trusted boot through trust, envi uh, trust environment by, uh, to prevent learning of malicious binaries on our platform. And also, hardware secure, security assured secure boot by using secure chain, which is provided system on chip in our display. Overall, this solution is uh, structured and hardened based on layer the defense concept. Based on a powerful security, three layers security solution from NAS, it protects your TV and signage from hacking. On top of that, Samsung started to provide NAS platform TV and signage from 2017. The role of Nox platform is to provide a security function in the form of secure Nox API to software developers who are making security services. 
Security features include protection, DRM, payment, remote desktop protocol, device management, and so on. By using Nox platform, software developers can create new services with the security features provided by Nox platform. For example, you can develop protection and payment and workplace, workplace services like that. Combined with your creative ideas, you will be able to create innovative services by using our APIs. Today, I am pleased to introduce new features of and key security features of our new Nox platform. These capabilities are provided by the Samsung Smart Signage Platform Nox API, which is available to B2B partners. New features include smart card and virtual private network. These two functions uh, can be applied to be to a variety of services, and most importantly, they are essential for security critical services. And also, I will introduce remote desktop protocol that can help software developer create innovative services in B2B environment. Okay. From now on, let's learn more about how you can use these features to create your services you want. First is SmartCard Nox API. This feature supports SmartCard, which is compatible with chip card interface device protocol. And these features provide the ability to send the APD command to smart card reader and smart card via USB interface. And also, it provides and supports contact and contact lists like NFC smart card reader. The smart card features have been installed on the Tizen 4.0 signage since this August. With this function on your services, it looks like you'll get a variety of business opportunities. For example, self-ordering kiosk in kick service restaurant market, self-check-in at airport. In hospitality, that could be applied to patient waiting system in hospitals. Let's look at the structure of a Smart Card Nox API. The CCID library is uh, mounted on Tizen platform and provides web API to web application through Pepper Plugin. Function include the get lead list is to get the name of a Smart Card product name. Next function is connect function is to get the, uh, to connect to smart card to smart card reader. Plus get status function is to get the information of a smart card status like uh, power on, power off, is it working or not. And you can use transmit, transmit function is to send APD command to the smart card reader and to smart card and disconnect function. Note that AP, the command should be sent to smart card reader in the form of APDU command. APDU command is application protocol unit, pro, uh, unit data, uh, which is uh, different for each vendor's uh, issuing card, smart card like uh, Visa, Master, it uh, has a different APUD command. So when you uh, develop your services by using our Smart Card API, at the time you should ask to uh, sm Smart Card issuers uh, to get the information regarding uh, APUD command, okay? 
Let's look at the example code. This is very simple JavaScript code. If you look at the flowed code, first, uh, first thing you need to do is to get the name of card reader and connect. When the connection completes successfully, send the APDU command to the card reader and to the smart card, and then get the status of smart card in the return message. And you can fill out some your code for your service here and disconnect with uh, this parameter. It's very easy to use this. Uh, I have prepared uh, a video so that you can understand smart card function much easier. The video display on the screen is connected to a smart card reader that supports CCID standard and NFC. Therefore, when the smart card contacts with the smart card reader, the smart card returns the data such as hexadecimal code, like this. By using this data read from smart card reader, it can be used for various services. You can use that. Okay, the following is the VPN API. VPN is a virtual private network. This feature that enables tunneling to securely deliver sensitive data over the internet. Currently, Knox platform offers OpenVPN because OpenVPN is a popular and very simple in small medium business. <laughs> These features will be able from the Tizen 4.0 signage. If you look at briefly the handshake mechanism, as you shown in the figure, you need to exchange your certificate between VPN server and VPN client like uh, our smart signage. And you need to create tunneling by using session key. Okay. Uh, with this feature, you can get a variety of business opportunities. For example, in the content management system field, content can be protected over the internet when downloading advertisement content from the main office server to the storage smart display. In addition, companies can protect their communication data when conducting video conference between branch offices and hackers. Finally, even if you did not bring your laptop to the hotel during your business trip, you can still use VPN function when you want to connect your office PC or system through smart signage installed at the hotel. Let's look at the structure of the VPN NOX API. OpenVPN is mounted on Tizen platform of B2B displays and provide web API to web application through Pepper program. And you can use these functions. First function is create function is to make a connection information. And then connect to the VPN server by using connect ID parameter. And we are providing API disconnect and destroy function. Destroy function is to remove the connect information. Okay, let's look at the actual example code. Just focusing on the yellow part of code to understand much easier. The first thing is to download the client certificate for virtual authentication between server and client and private key 
for creating session key between the VPN client and server side. Next, create connection properties for connect with the VPN server, including VPN server's IP address and certificate storage pass and key, private key storage pass here. And then you can connect to the actual server using create a function and connect function, like this. Okay. OpenVPN is a little bit, bit complicated, so I invited a special person to help you understand much easier. He is the CEO of UCBU, the key partner of the Samsung Smart Signage platform. I hope that you can better understand the utility of OpenVPN through his command and his actual demo. Please welcome to Guy Avita with a big applause. Hi, everyone. Uh, as I mentioned, my name is Guy Avital from UC View. Uh, a lot of room with a lot of smart people here. So, um, uh, tell you a little bit about our company. So, we are about 30 employees. Uh, Southern California, uh, mostly geeks, uh, developing uh, digital signage IPTV platforms. And we uh, adopted the SSP technology about three years ago. Uh, it just made sense. Why do we need those thousands of thousands of players across the world? We cannot control them if we have just the screen. Uh, I cannot say that SSP adoption was easy at the beginning. The earlier version was a lot of head scratching. But as Samsung's commitment to improve the product, uh, it was phenomenal. So in the last couple of years, the product just flipped in, in, uh, in productivity and features. And the key principle in a platform for development, that the platform is chasing the ever-going race on supporting standard industry platform. So the innovation and emerging technology comes up all the time. And as a developer, you don't want to have and develop things from scratch. So as the platform starts supporting this, you can offer it to your customers. Um, so um, one of the things that we're going to focus on that, uh, today is basically the security. And as you know, nobody can say, I have enough security. Uh, a security is an issue right now, especially in our platform, digital signage that get hacked and platform that get hacked, and requirement of the industry, uh, such as HIPAA, uh, and um, major defense, Department of Defense. So suddenly screening players is not enough to have them control content. They want to make sure it's secure. So um, what is VPN? As he mentioned, um, it's basically tunneling of the communication between devices, in our case, and the user to a server. A server and the screen connected to private network. This private network in some time is mandatory in banks, uh, HIPAA info information when they're passing in dynamic uh, patient information to the screen, and they want to secure the information. Until now, we have issue because we have to create VLAN and a lot of uh, complex, uh, complex uh, to network topology to accommodate this isolation of network of digital signage. So. Um, Basically, we encrypt the communication, and Tizen uh, platform comes up. After the Tizen platform comes up, then it comes to the server that in the, uh, specify in the Tizen. It gets a certificate. It's launched the app. So the first initialization with before content ever passed between the screen and the communication is a certificate when initiate the connection, and then it's playing the content. So. I try to record if it's play. Huh? Wait. Wait. Yeah. Five, five seconds. Just move. Oops. No back. Let me double click it. Oh, here okay. it is. So this is the standard, what we're doing until today. We have a server 
and we're basically uh, creating. Now we replace that communication <coughs> with, uh, with uh, VPN com communication. Now everything that flows between the screen, user and the server is secure. This is a screenshot. We're launching the, the Tizen platform. We're connecting it in establishing connection to the server. It connected the VPN connection, and right after the connection is successful, then it's going to launch and start sending the content um, between the server. Now, the entire communication now between the screen and the server is fully secure. So especially in an environment like, like I mentioned, HIPAA, or anything where security is a key, uh, this, is, this feature is, uh, is called the future of uh, digital science security. A um, couple of things that uh, comes on top, so you take the VPN, and of course security is the key on it, but now on top of this VPN connection, now you don't need to deal with uh, firewall issues because you have penetration of firewall, remote control, two-way communication, uh, this combination with the WebSocket, now the screen is fully live with real-time communication. Uh, as we mentioned, the VPN is an open platform, uh, open VPN, so you can actually embed it into your server, you can embed it into your platform, you don't need to have it as a separate product. Um, network segmentation, again, this is the, the key requirement today with a large corporation to segment the network of the digital signage from the content, content encryption, and uh, of course the, the key is enhanced security. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Guy. Yeah, I suppose our audience uh, understood very well about the uh, utility of OpenVPN. Uh, thanks to you, yeah. Okay. Finally, the IDP Nox API. The feature is compatible with remote desktop protocol supported by Microsoft. Therefore, it is a feature that connects to most PC, laptops, and even cloud server where the Windows Open City is installed. The features will be applied to Tizen 4.0 signage. Okay, if we look at the application area, first is meeting room scenario. You can connect your PC on your desk from signage or flip like this. You can connect from here to the, your remote PC on the desk. Yeah. Now on the other hand, you can configure the scenarios that connect your company PC to sign is installed uh, at the hotel if you didn't bring your laptop, yeah. Okay, let's look at the uh, uh, structures. IDP engine is mounted on Tizen platform of display and provide web API to web application through the Pepper plugin. And you can use these functions. First, the uh, Host is a reachable function, is to checking the status of a server, remote server. And second, on success cert function is to verify the certificate of a server, remote desktop protocol server. And if you succeed to checking the verification of a certification, and then you can connect with the host name in ID and password to the uh, remote server. Let's see the code. This code is very simple. Just to look at the yellow part of code. The first, checking the remote server is reachable and uh, verifying the certificate of a server. And you can connect to the remote desktop server by entering IP address and credential such as IDM password, the remote PC, okay? Mm. Now, I would like to explain a new service example that utilize our Nox API, such as smart card, VPN, and 
RDP. I have an interest so far. Uh, let's imagine uh, when you do not have uh, bring your laptop to the hotel for your uh, business trip or vacation. Uh, it's a terrible situation. Yeah, uh, you are working on vacation uh, at the hotel, uh, but you you got uh, some urgent issue. You urgently need to connect to your PC or server in the office to use the same working environment at the hotel. How can you do that at the time? Yeah. I prepared this demo to explain how you can do that at the time. First, contact your mobile employee ID card here to smart card NFC leader. It's connected to the leader signage at the hotel. Next, the VPN certificate is sent to the signage from the mobile application. Also, the IP ID password of remote PC you want to connect to is sent to, to the signage. This allows you to connect and work at any time to your company's PC. How convenient and easy. Just the users touch your mobile to the NFC reader, which is connected to the smart signage installed at the hotel or your hotel room. Now, let me introduce a new service that Samsung is launching on based on Knox. This is a remote workspace service secured by Knox. This remote workspace is protected by Knox Secure Solution, described I already described above, and is developed by using the security function provided by Knox platform. <laughs> this service consists of remote workspace panel and services, such as remote PC, screen sharing, and cloud suite. Through these services, you can experience various kind of application installed on multiple devices such as laptop, PC, and smartphone. For, you, for example, you can enjoy music, movies, games, and even edit your documentation through the business application, such as MS Office, which, which is installed remote PC or local laptop. At this time, all applications can be controlled these one keyboard which is connected to the TV. Let's take a look at remote workspace service in more detail with a video clip. For now, remote workspace service consists of three kind of services. One is remote PC is a, a service that connects to remote PC. We keep it with remote desktop protocol released by MS. So you can edit documentation and enjoy the game, which is just uh, installed on remote PC. And you can find some place to have a vacation with your family by using this service. And next is a screen Sharing is a feature that can connect to a laptop or mobile device in close to watch video and edit a documentation. This service is better for watching the video. And this uh, service can be controlled by our keyboard, which is connected to the TV or signage, smart signage. And next is uh, Cloud Suite, uh, which is uh, working on browser services to edit documentation.
For example, you can work with MS Office 365 or Google Docs through a TV internet browser like this. Yeah, not that. You can control the old function with one keyboard which is connected to the TV and signage without using the keyboard connected to the each device. Okay. Remote workspace service can provide various partner services to consumer by accessing various devices and even cloud services. We hope that our partners will participate in remote workspace services and provide value of services. So today I invited an important person to introduce the first partner service of a remote workspace panel for making you understand the possibility of a remote workspace services. She is VMware's product line manager and is responsible for key products such as Horizon. Please welcome Christina with a big applause. Hi. Oh, let me. There we go. There I am. Hi, I'm Christina DeNike. I'm with VMware. And you guys probably know VMware as a company that does data center services, does vSphere and NSX and vSAN. We're not going to talk about any of that. We're going to talk about end user computing. VMware is really trying to help our customers make that transition from the way that they used to do handle their employees to a digital transformation. I don't need to tell a Samsung crowd that employees are more and more mobile than they used to be. You used to be able to have desktops, you knew where they were, you built a little firewall around them, you controlled what was going on, you gave them some access to the internet, but you had control over what was going on. Now people want to be able to access their work from their laptop, which could go anywhere, their phones, devices that you don't know anything about, their computer at home. This is all, I'm sure, wrote, you guys all know this already. But VMware wants to really be a partner in helping cut companies make that transition. And we do that, so these are some statistics about how everyone's moving around, you know that. We have a suite of, of tools that we're using to help people make that transition, to really be able to control their employees' work and make sure that you're secure. So we have, oh, that green is very hard to read. Desktop experience. We have this great single sign-on flow. End users can go in, they can do their single sign-on and then get to all of their apps. We have unified endpoint management. So we had AirWatch, we called that mobile device management. We're now doing that on desktops as well. We're doing it on Chromebooks and Mac and Windows. Application access. Oh, there are only 12 minutes left. Oh, I'll talk a little faster. Uh, application access. So with the user environment management, we can push down native apps. We can also give you access to SaaS apps with the SAML authentication. And we can get you right into a virtual app if that's what you need. Device level security, lots of policies if the device is enrolled, and even if the device isn't enrolled, we can have policies around what SaaS apps you can launch when, based on IP address or your device type. And then we also give you virtual access, which has been just a great tool for, cust for customers to be able to know that their data isn't ever leaving their building if that's what they need, or as a bridge to an, a legacy app that they can't get to run on their Samsung device. So we like to say that we support any app, any place, on any device. Um, so we have a wide variety of different kinds of apps that we're going to support. We have identity, which you can either log tie into an existing IDP like Ping or Okta. We have support for that. Or you can use our identity, um, identity server. Uh, context, we know a lot about the device if it's enrolled. If, we, if it's not enrolled, we know that too, and we can block it access based on that, and then a wide variety of devices that we can run on, both in terms of enrollment and then also in terms of Horizon. And I'm really going to talk about a lot about Horizon coming up. So who here knows what Horizon is? Yeah, 
Yay. So Horizon is the VMware version of a virtualized desktop or a remote app. So it's running on in the data center and you're accessing it a lot like what we were showing with the RDP, but this is the VMware version. And instead of it being a dedicated piece of hardware, you're running it on vSphere, it'll spin up as soon as you need it and then it'll break down when you don't need it. So it's, a lot, it's much more flexible and makes more sense for this digital signage. VMware actually partners with Samsung in a lot of different ways. We work with the DeX, so when you get to your full desktop from the DeX, um, you can also, at that point, if you needed to, you can boot into a full Windows, Windows device with Horizon. We support, we support the various NOx kinds of controls through AirWatch, through our Workspace ONE device management. So if you want a single product that's going to enable you to manage your iOS, your Windows 10, your Mac, your other Android devices, and get to the Knox control, we, we are, we're ready for you. Um, and, then, and then Horizon 7. So this is a little bit of a preview. So don't get too excited, we don't support this yet, but we really wanted to show what, what, what we're working on. What we're gonna be showing is you're gonna be able to launch a full Windows desktop from a Samsung TV with the keyboard and mouse support. Um, Horizon is available either an on-prem version, which works with your on-prem vSphere, um, or you can have an Azure version where you're actually using Azure VMs. We're also supporting, we have a version on IBM software, and then, Amazon Cloud, we have VMC, so you can have the whole Horizon 7 stack set up in the cloud. So that, just to give you an idea of some of your options. Um, your universal catalog, this is part of the workspace one where you have your, an admin can set up the catalog of SaaS apps, uh, apps that should be installed locally if it's a managed device, and virtual apps. They can also actually manage uh, Citrix virtual apps if that's what, what a customer has set up. Um, identity, you'll be able to see the SAML handoff where you don't have to keep authenticating once you've gone through, once you've authenticated once. And we're really working on reporting and analytics. This is gonna be a real push for us so that as you're, as you're managing your environment, that data is all going into a single place where you can look at what your, what your end users are doing and do some predictive, you know, I know that they all come in at nine, I need to start spinning things up and have vSphere ready for those connections. Those kind, that kind of logic is something that we're looking forward to adding. Let's, let's just get to the demo. All right. Um, so we're gonna start with the remote workspace and here an admin has actually added in a Horizon link already. You get into the workspace one, the user authenticates once in here, and from there they get their whole catalog of apps, and you can, the user can pick favorites that then are sitting on the favorites tab, you can go back, and this, this app catalog can have hundreds of apps, this is a, you know, a little mini demo. Um, so here we've added a couple more apps, the end user can really customize what they want their experience to be. From the catalog you can actually launch as well. So here we are launching a full VM. You can actually, um, so no additional sign-on, you're gonna get right into your VM because that's the, the SAML authentication, the single sign-on. You can view it full screen um, or you can actually go back into the tabs if you need to. So this is a full Windows 10 running on a data center that is available. We're gonna launch an app, not Cortado, we don't care about that. We're gonna launch an app, Paint. That's a really important app. I know everyone really spends a lot of time and money trying to get Paint working on there. Oh, but look, it worked. And we got, it actually had the touch, it uh, registered the, the drag of the mouse. The next app we're, uh, we're running is IE. We have a lot of customers who, who set all of this up just to get to an old IE app. They have some custom app that they built in IE and it just won't run an Edge or any other app. Um, and now we're gonna, we're gonna show video. Now, obviously, if you had a Samsung TV, you don't really need to go to a VM to run YouTube. But the point is that we've got really nice, we've really optimized our protocol to make video smooth. And if your video is smooth, then that's a pretty good indication that your text is gonna be fine. 
Um, this is another thing that's great about Horizon. You can decide where you want to invest in your hardware. This is an example of NVIDIA cards sitting in the data center that then are available for 3D workloads. Uh, going back, so that was, we showed a full VM. We also have remote apps, so you can just give the user that one app that he needs, and, um, and he maybe doesn't need access to the full desktop where he might muck things up. So here we have, we're gonna run Word, which is kind of a handy thing to be able to do from a TV. And there it is. There it is. We provide this little slider bar so you can navigate quickly. Um, makes it a little easier than trying to, uh, to click on things. So that's the end of the demo. Um, and just again, this is not shipping yet, uh, but, uh, but you can see that we've got it pretty much working and uh, we hope to be, be able to make an announcement, an official announcement sometime soon. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. Okay. Did you understand the vision of remote workspace service? Okay. Did you fully understand how to use our Knox API for your services? Now? Yeah? Okay, that's good. <laughs> okay, I'm going to finish my session with this. Uh, please feel free to contact me if you have any questions. This is my contact information, okay? And finally, uh, thanks Guy and Krishna uh, for your presentation. And thank you to all of you to attend here today. So I give you my uh, last message. Let's go together to create new innovative services with Samsung. Thank you. So, is there any questions? Please ask us. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Hi. Uh, I noticed in the example code for connecting to the smart card, mm -hmm. there was a line at the bottom for explicitly disconnecting. What happens if I forget to add that line of code? Is is it really a necessary line, or, or what are the consequences of not having it? Yeah, I, I show that. Just a moment. Yeah, this code, yep. So this code is just a, a disconnect code. At the time, we are just uh, using parameter, string, string parameter. So if you want to disconnect, we already defined the, the string as card live card. It means it disconnect the smart card, okay? And but we didn't show the, our pre-code yet. Maybe uh, we, we have a lot of uh, function so if you want to get us some uh, manual about this, how to use this, we can show that, yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, about workspace. Yeah. Uh, that uh, when I create workspace, I can install any apps I enterprise needs in that workspace and manage it and I can wipe the workspace without whole platform resetting. Is that like how on Android we create workspaces? Is that very similar, one workspace concept on signage or is it somewhat different? Uh, so, so, uh, Not RDP, you have uh, okay. a workspace, yeah, right? Yeah, I showed it, yeah. This, yeah. Yeah, when we, on Android phone, there is a personal space device thing, mm -hmm. and we create a workspace mm -hmm. for work work related applications, mm -hmm. like container, mm -hmm. and uh, that is all related to work. And when that device is no more need to access work, we can wipe only the workspace yeah, related yeah, right. thing. 
Is it same concept here? Yeah, yeah same concept, it, it, which is protected uh, by using the sandbox technology. So we are calling that the secure zone. Yeah, so it's based on secure zone. So that's why we named uh, the remote workspace secured by Knox. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I was wondering the security consequences of requiring the developer to remember to add in the disconnect line. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I would want to put less of a security burden on the developer. Uh, and I'm wondering what happens if they mistakenly forget to disconnect. Will the machine keep the credentials? Is that what would happen? Mm -hmm. uh, so smart hardware for what? I guess for the smart card. Yeah, for the smart card. Uh huh. Uh, maybe uh, we didn't uh, uh, the edit the disconnect. Maybe uh, the smart card is working. So you mean that some people is uh, some make some fraud situation to get the smart card. So every time you should uh, disconnect from the application. I think yeah. Yeah. Do you mean if the smart card yeah. is still sitting there, or, or if, no, the no, user, if the user's walked away? If the smart card, the developer didn't have that line of code, mm -hmm. saying that, okay, the connection is not going to So, I, I mean, I, I'm sort of talking out of turn, but I mean, it depends on what you're trying to do with the smart card. Like, I, I know for Horizon that we use the smart card for the initial authentication, uh -huh. and then we assume you're authenticated, and we have our own logic for how long we leave you authenticated. You don't have to leave the card in there. If you have an app that's regularly checking the cert, then as soon as you pull it out, it'll stop working. So I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it sort of depends on what you want to be doing with that app. Okay. It doesn't seem like it would be necessary, yeah. but, it, but, but it would be, you know, if, if, for instance, you want to make sure that as soon as a user quits your app, that, the, that you're, they're no longer connected, they're no longer authenticated, then you might want that line. Mm -hmm. Okay. It just depends on your application, yeah. Hello. Uh, yeah. So today you, you were speaking about using uh, large TV size displays as, as thin clients. Uh, are there plans to make uh, you know, more traditional, uh, you know, like 24 inch desktop monitor style thin clients? Uh, so you, you mean, uh, is there any some size for the desktop monitor size using the remote workspace? Sorry. No, it would be the same conversation, which yeah. is w whether we are adding support for Tizen. I, we don't really care about the size. So this is a, a conversation about how we would do that with our with the browser on Tizen. What? Is there enough? And so, so you have the you have these these larger TVs, yeah, smart TVs running running Tizen. Yeah. Uh, so for your desktop monitor type yeah. displays. Uh, will they have? Will they be running Tizen and be able to be used as a thin client as well? So uh, we we are just focusing on TV and B two B displays like uh, Cyanide. So it uh, depends on it. There's no depends on the size. So you can support all of them display by uh, same Tizen platform. We are using that now. Yeah. So I mean, what's the smallest yeah. that we that has Tizen? I, I, I understand that. I'll, I'll, I'll ask my question offline. Thanks. Okay, okay. And uh, we should finish it, our session. And so if you have a question, uh, let's go to the speaking meeting room. Uh, meeting, meeting room session. Let's go there. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.